Hello, and welcome to the Inverted Castle, a podcast about Metroidvania games. I'm Thomas Blight, a man who has replaced all of his blood with oil, and uh, my co-host is Eric Fox. Hello, I am an icon of class. <laughs> um, and today we're talking about Iconoclasts, uh, a game from 2018 from uh, independent developer... Oh, I did not think about how to pronounce his name first. I've been... Yeah, it's... I believe it's Cognac, like the drink, but it's spelt with uh, K-O-N-J-A-C. Uh, his Wait, real name what? is Yeah. But, or his real name is, uh, Joachim Sandberg. Oh, uh, yeah, sorry. I was thinking, yeah, Joachim Sandberg. <laughs> and I was like, wait, that, that is a J that should be pronounced as a Wa, right? I'm pretty sure, like, Joaquin Phoenix. Yeah. But, again, it's, it's all been text and none of the promotional material has been voiced, so who knows? But that's the thing I'm going to stick with. Yeah. Uh, I guess getting this stuff out. Right at the beginning, for some reason. Uh, <laughs> award-winning games that were released in 2018. Uh, not going to list all games, because that would take forever. Uh, Monster Hunter World. Uh, oh, God of man. War. Fate Grand Order. The mobile game. Uh, Florence. Astrobot Rescue Mission. Beat Saber. Return of the Obra Dinn. Gree. Uh, Red Dead Redemption 2. Celeste. And I'm pretty sure this showed up on a previous podcast's year. Um, Goroga? Or Gorogoa? Again? <laughs> Gorogo- Gorogoa? Gorogoa, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I... wait, how can it win awards in multiple years? But I think it just, it like, it got a, a mobile release and then a Switch release, and if you release on a new platform, you're able to win awards that year? I don't know. Some publications do things differently, I assume, but yeah, it was kind of a banner year for a lot of things, in particular, like, the indie space of Operdin and Celeste, mm. so I remember this game didn't exactly light the world on fire like, say, Celeste did. Yeah, I but... mean, it's also a pretty crowded year for Metroidvanias, specifically. Um, I, I also compiled a list of those, because I found a bunch of them uh, while I was searching. Um, so other Metroidvanias that I noticed uh, that released in 2018, and there's probably way more. Um, Time Spinner, Chasm, La Mulana 2, Dandara, Treasure Adventure World, and this one is a technical star, maybe, probably doesn't really count as a Metroidvania, Dead Cells. You can make you can make the argument, but like again, this is like you know. You gotta feel it out for yourself when it comes to like genres like this, but yeah. But yeah, definitely a crowded field in 2018. I've actually played um, Time Spinner and Chasm, um, and and I've played La Mulana too, which is, uh, I I I it's uh, I hesitate to recommend it because <laughs> it is so much itself. It is like a cryptic. Metroidvania, if that makes sense, like as like a crossword to cryptic crosswords are compa- comparable. Is it uh, just as bad or bad? I guess quotations. Is it just as inscrutable as La Mulana One? Uh, I would say so. Yes, it, it, at the very least, it's 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 the sequel to that game made by the same people. Uh, it has the a very much the same uh, design. Uh, yeah. uh, All right, <laughs> ideas, but. but we're not here to talk about those games. We're here to talk about iconoclasts. Yeah, not yet, at least. And isn't that just isn't that just like indicative of that year of not a lot of people <laughs> talked about iconoclasts at the time because yeah. of all these other games? But iconoclasts, right? So yeah, in iconoclasts, you're this um, unlicensed mechanic in a society that has it's not quite a caste system. Because it's, like, your brother is a chemist, and you're not, like, it's not class-based, it's just, like, the government arbitrarily decides what they think you should do, and that's what you do. Yeah, it, it's not only just the government, it's a theocracy, so, like, it's, you know, reinforced by, like, uh, religious zealotry. Uh, but, like, in this world, there's a substance called ivory, which is 
in other like in other like uh, fantasy settings would be basically be mana. It's just the thing everything runs on, including just like the plants and the earth and stuff. Like have this energy from ivory, yeah. and because all of their technology runs on ivory, and because ivory is this holy substance, mechanics specifically are you know a controlled group. Yeah, um, yeah. So everyone goes and poaches the elephants. For their ivory. Uh, as it turns out, <laughs> no elephants in this game, which is wild. Instead, no. they just kind of get it from anywhere. Um, you, you do go and kill wild animals for their ivory, but that's not really the point, I guess. Also, you specifically don't kill things. You stun them. And if you if you stun them real good, you get overstun. I mean... If you stun things and they explode, I feel like that's killing it. But okay, but sure, <laughs> overstun. Uh, what does that overstun do anyway? Does it have uh, an effect? I can't remember if it's not just like an indication, or if you get like bonus back to uh, basically like a, a. We should get into like how the gameplay actually flows uh, first, but <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, because the thing we're alluding to is the tweak system. Yes. Um, because you're so, a mechanic. You make stuff. And so, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so you can equip up to three tweaks, which are sort of like passive abilities in many other games. Uh, but there's this uh, tension mechanic where every time you get hit, one of your tweaks will go offline. Um, and then as you kill enemies or just break breakables, uh, you will get ivory to build the tweaks back up. Right? Um, yeah. So, uh, sometimes your stuff will be off, sometimes it'll be on. Um, I, I don't know, I was kind of underwhelmed by the tweaks, I guess. Yeah, I will say, like, um, spoiler warning, I love this game, but there are a lot of things that definitely feel undercooked, um, hmm. or at the very least not explored fully. That or... game is definitely not a Metroidvania. Pardon? No, sorry. Terrible oh. joke. And I, also, I realized that's overcooked. Damn. It's overcooked. <laughs> so close. <laughs> so close. Ah. Now, now the prequel, undercooked. Yes. Who knows what genre that's going to be. But, um, uh, yeah, like, there isn't enough variety of tweaks that, like, I felt really made a difference. Like, yeah. you have one that, like, gives you, like, a free hit. So, like, instead of losing health and the tweak, you just lose the tweak. And, like, um, that's actually kind of a funny thing, too, where uh, maybe I was just really bad at, dis like, exploring the correct way, but I got all of the interesting tweaks at the end of the game when I decided to go back and try to find every treasure chest. So, most of the most interesting tweaks are kind of like that. I think the only really, like, early game good tweak is the combat role and it's mostly not so much for its intended like use of oh you like in vulnerability dodge through something uh i didn't find it much good use for that but it is the fastest mode of trans of uh <laughs> running across the field so speed running strats it's and uh, yeah the actual speed run uh clips out of bounds in the water section just uh swims through the air to the end of the game but okay I know. That's, uh, that's pretty funky. Um, yeah, that's actually kind of funny. I, like, I don't know. I Something wasn't gelling with me about the secrets in this game. Um, and I ended up being starved for ivory oil, which is one of the resources used to assemble the tweaks. Yep, it's um, the rarest one. Uh, and it also, it also locks the most interesting uh, tweaks. <laughs> yeah, for the entire game. Like, I got the combat role I think shortly before the um, like sort of climax stuff before the not like it, not the last boss but like the that climax that is unskippable the thing that feels like it's gonna be the final boss and yeah then, yeah 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 so I was a little disappointed in, but by that um I was also kind of disappointed, so, like, I did the bonus bosses, and oh, good. I um, I liked them a lot, uh, but 
I found that the most useful tweaks were the ones to stop damage. Like I never used the ones that stop damage, but I also never tried them. Oh. Uh, I mean, they... Like, I tried a couple different builds against the bonus, bonus bosses, um, and I was like, yep, the one where I just blank damage is the most effective. I am by far doing better with it. Fair. And also, I'm pretty sure in most of them, you can, like by hitting the boss or, like, various projectiles in the boss room, like, get things back. So it's not just, like, a, a one free hit per boss encounter. You can actually, like, rack up several if you're uh, being, uh, you know, astute. And, oh, yeah. Uh, and, and, like, I kind of liked that idea of, like, hey, this is a reward for good play. You get your passives back. Yeah. Um, and it works particularly well with the the damage block where it's, like, Great, you've done like you've been doing good and dodging, so I'm gonna give you a free shield. Essentially, yeah. right? And um, if you're really good at dodging, then you also keep your like say damage buffs, uh, which are also things where you can get certain tweaks that uh, just boost output of certain uh, elements of your combat kit. Yeah, um, I would. I will say I don't think the majority of the bosses actually make sense for this mechanic. Uh, how do you mean? Like, which one specifically? Uh, I feel like this game relies fairly heavily on puzzle bosses rather than straight combat where it's not a challenge. Like, the challenge is in figuring out what you are supposed to do to hurt the boss most of the time. And I feel yeah. like that is at odds with the uh, ivory as a reward for doing well. Yeah, I think it's like the ivory is more like, if if you just like mess up in execution, you can like recover it back. Yeah. But yeah, I can see how you'd, you'd want uh, like a combat system that is in, more inherently rewarding or like ex extendable to like multiple like encounters, whereas... I, like I like puzzle bosses, so um, I, I mean, like, I actually, yeah, I'm fine with it. Some of them, I was just like, wait, what? Why would that have worked after I figured it out? But maybe I'm just dumb. <laughs> I don't know, but yeah, there are a lot. There are a lot of puzzle bosses, but I feel like there's a good variety in boss, like boss design, that like I, I didn't feel like um, overlap in design or. Uh, challenge in that way like each one was like okay new stuff let's go especially when like they pair you with the character of mina the pirate with a shotgun yeah who is like one of the clearest indications that this game had a broader scope in earlier in its development than it ended up having <laughs> because she's actually playable and does her own things and maybe the game intended for you to actually switch party members a lot more yes Indeed, there is a conspicuous like uh, party indication thing in the top right corner whenever like a re like an NPC is like tra traveling with you, and they have like uh, like their own portrait, and it's just like, oh, cool, can I play as them? But no. <laughs> but also, it's it seems pretty uh, clear that you, this pirate girl Mina, who you befriend, your brother Elro, what what a piece of shit, <laughs> uh, and. Uh, the 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 naive uh, entitled royal man, all great characters, all pieces of shit. Love them. <laughs> um, yeah, and I guess we should get into the plot, which I was trying to describe this to my wife and was just utterly failing at actually being able to describe the plot well. Um, okay, well you can try again. I'll I'll do my best to jump in here because I've played this twice and gone down a couple of wiki holes, but a little okay. incomplete. So I mean, the plot centers around the, um, I guess sort of, this is going to be sort of reductive Western esque civilization. The mm -hmm. one concern, which is a theocracy ruled by the mother, yes, um, and they sort of the tri, which is the mother. This. Uh, immortal he and the stars. Yeah, there's there's all this stuff about the star worm that for a long time didn't make sense. Um, I like it actually because when you're introduced to this religion, 
they only ever refer to a capital H he in blue text. Very important, very reverent. But they don't mention that he is the star worm until later. And you're like, wait, same, wait, really? And I thought that was, I thought it was cool to be like, like no one made a big deal out of it because that's normal, but it's like the, a later discovery for the player. Yeah. Um, so they and the, um, I have no idea how I'm going to pronounce this. I see, Issy? Issy. I think I'm going to go for Issy. Issy, yeah. Yeah. Uh, who are the, also labeled as pirates by the One Concern. Yeah, the Issy pirates who are, like, procreation worshippers is the best I can put it. Yeah, so they... Um, fertility worshippers. They're big into the fertility stuff. Yeah, their, like, ancestral vessel, which they, uh, venerate, is, uh, essential, like, clear to, uh, you know, a savvy player as a colonizer ship from Earth, you assume. Uh, and so they've really taken on their whole, uh, pr- their mission to, uh, make humanity live on, and they are very into, uh, heteronormative couples that ha- ha- are childbearing, <laughs> which, We'll get into if we discuss the character of Mina. Yeah. Um, so, shortly before the plot begins, yes, your father dies, and I'm actually pretty unclear on it. It sort of assumed that the one concern killed your father. Um, yes, it's not, like, super important whether or not they did, but they do have a history of... Uh, uh, enacting, uh, quote unquote, penance upon sinners, uh, which is them like doing some, uh, they have control over, uh, some control over, uh, the planet and how it like rearranges itself. And they can just kind of, uh, go to your, like, make sure you're in your home and destroy the place. Yeah. And, Due to that, your uh, brother Elro has made some poor decisions. He gets radicalized uh, yes. by this. Um, and uh, this sort of culminates in the very beginning of the game of uh, his house being penis- penanced while you, him, and his wife and child are all in it. Uh, you are not in it, just him and his wife and child. You uh, you got arrested and take it somewhere else at the oh, time. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, you don't know what he did at this point. Like, in, like you don't find out, like, what he actually did till later. Um, but, yeah, yeah uh, like, this whole opening section, you kind of, like, meet your brother. He has a really uh, uh, tense argument with his wife. Uh, you meet your uh, little niece. She's very cute. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, a couple of the agents just pop outside after you help him, uh, get his, get some ivory batteries, cause they need some more of those, gotta keep the electricity running, and, uh, there's this one agent, Agent Black, who, uh, has, su- suffers from constant migraines, and is always irritable, and she's the best, and, uh, <laughs> she hates you, hates, like, just has no patience for any of this, like, religious, like, BS, uh, but is absolutely committed to doing her duty, and seems to really hate Elro in particular. Yeah. And so she arrests you, and Penance comes, and you just see a flash of it. Um, there's, like, a, a glimpse of, like, a, a boss that you had fought earlier uh, coming up from under his house. Uh... His wife and child die at this point. He gets, uh, he loses an eye and, uh, he tries to fight it with a sword. Obviously it didn't work too well. And then you meet Mina. Yeah. Um, who, yeah, is one of the DC pirates. She's, uh, sort of shirking responsibilities and running around all over the place. Um, and just kind of like, oh, you look nice. I'm going to, like, well, okay, you ha- escape Gale together. And then she's just kind of like, yep, we're just going to tag around together because I don't want to confront my mom, and that seems good. Um, there, yeah, there, she, yeah, there's a lot at home that she doesn't want to like deal with. Uh, and then, uh, I guess, more centrally to the like overarching plot uh, and of what's going on, you also meet Royal fairly shortly after um, yeah. and actually save him from uh, 
a machine made by one of the pirates. Yes. Um, and Royal is, uh, I guess, essentially Ivory Jesus. He is the next in line to be the leader of the One Concern, uh, if if and when Mother ever steps down. But he's been co- completely in the dark as to like what their actual like uh, machinations are. He completely believes the public image of uh, the scriptures and uh, what ivory means and what it means to undergo uh, infusion into yourself. Yeah. Oh boy. And I feel like uh, half the plot is him being like, I'm sure we can all smooth these things over if I just go talk to them. And then he goes and talks to them and bad things happen to him. He goes to talk to them and everyone's just so mad at him for ruining so much of their plans because they didn't tell him anything. (laughs) Yeah, it's just like, dude, maybe you should have, like, trained Ivory Jesus um, in how the statecraft was supposed to be run, and then this wouldn't be a problem. But so I, the, I don't know, maybe he is, was just too naive. The thing is, so, uh, we shouldn't, uh, instead of going, like, beat by beat, like, that's kind of the setup, it, but... Yeah, like, we needed that to establish it, right? But now we can not go play by play, because that would take forever. Exactly. So, like, broadly speaking, like, there's an, there's an energy crisis. There's, uh, the planet itself is running low. Uh, the one concern can somewhat control uh, what's called the planet spines. You kind of see them whenever you're going underground. But it basically rearranges the uh, world. There's a character who is uh, on the run from the law for doing unlawful cartography. Because, again, everything's, uh, everything is measured and or uh, like controlled in this world. But uh, the one concern seeing this, and having already, like, this planet has two moons, and they've already completely sucked dry one of them. They kind of see it, like, shattered in the the sky. And they're basically saying, okay, well, this planet's fucked. And it's getting fucked really fast, because, for one thing, what, like, uh, the EC pirates, uh, unbeknownst to them, uh, they think they're being environmental by... uh, salvaging their own ivory from uh, the bottom of the ocean. Turns out that's doing terrible things to the structure. Uh, but mm-hmm. the church, the one concern, mother, they have this plan. And they have uh, that they're going to take a rocket ship, and only a select few people who have the white ticket uh, will get to join them on this new colony on the moon, and the rest of the people will be left on the dry husk of the earth as it inevitably shatters and is destroyed. The so, Earth, not actually Earth. Not actually Earth, sorry. The planet. <laughs> but, yeah. Earth is separate. It's sort of hinted at that, oh, all these people, like, came from there in these, uh, like, uh, colony ships, these arcs. Um, and yeah. so, Royal is never really told any of this, even though he does have a white ticket. He's getting through, but it's kind of implied that Mother doesn't really plan on ceding her authority anytime soon. And because he is so devout, it was at the very least, at one time, convenient to keep him in the dark. But <laughs> Yeah, and I guess there's actually kind of an interesting thing in this about the characters that are devout, because the other character that is devout is General Chrome, who is also one of the agents. Um, General Chrome, yeah, oh... Backing up a bit, an agent yeah. specifically <laughs> has g- undergone ivory transfusion. Uh, so, like, Mother and Royal, they do it perfectly, no no harm, no foul, their hair turns white, and they get superpowers. Cool. If it's not quite good enough, but you survive, you tend to, like, lose some part of your body and uh, still get superpowered and long life, but, uh, like... Chrome loses his legs. Uh, I believe Agent Black loses her arms and suffers from migraines forever. Yeah, uh, uh, Agent Ash. There was something about like constant gnawing at his stomach or something. Yeah, I believe. I think Agent White loses his eyes. I'm not entirely sure, but like, yeah, there's always a cost if you don't just die outright, and most people die outright. That does uh, explain why he has laser eyes. Yeah, that, that's that's like my inference. Uh, and I think uh, Agent 
gray has um, cybernetic ears or something? It seemed that way. Agent Gray shows up very briefly, but of note, very important <laughs> character. <laughs> kind of the linchpin of uh, the whole thing when they die. Yeah. So, like, through your intervention and royal mucking with things, um, you kind of end up unleashing this spine of the world thing. Yeah. Um, which, it's never quite clear what this is actually supposed to be, but um, it seems like deep inside the world there are these blue-eyed things that yep. seem to be able to take control of um, the wild monsters um, and anyone who has ivory infusion. Yes, I believe so. Uh, but I, I think the implication was that they couldn't do it to regular humans. I'm not sure about that. I think it's just like anything with ivory. And so, like, even, like, normal people have that, I believe, but I can't remember. Eh, I, I don't Maybe know. I, I thought the implication, because, uh, like, there's a boss fight, right, where that um, blue brain thing takes over. Uh, I've forgotten if this character has a real name. I'm just going to uh, call the them Silver Guardian. The Silver Samurai. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, um. The, the implication that I got was that it can take over the Silver Samurai because they have ivory infusions. Um, but they, it can't take over you because you are baseline human. Okay. I think that makes sense. Uh, it doesn't super matter since, like, the thing with the eyes is that, like, they control... They, they can control wildlife and they can also control the, like, uh, the things that are, like, reshaping the planet and, like, keeping things stable. And so the big thing that you kind of release uh, from that uh, kind of exacerbates the problem of this planet is literally dying and it's, like, nearly hollow from the excessive ir ivory mining. Yeah, and it also sends a signal when Royal flings it up really high to the Starworm. Yes. The Starworm oh. is none too happy about the state of the planet and vis-a-vis uh, uh, -vis ivory supply. Yeah. Um, and then that sort of precipitates a civil war among the one concern with uh, one faction being, like, the soldiers outside of the one true city um, being led by General Chrome. Yeah, they're, they're, like, military that, like, extends beyond the, the like, headquarters versus, like, the security essentially and the uh the people defending mother specifically yeah in which both sides are trying to get on a rocket destined for the moon base um to preserve them because the world is probably ending yep uh yeah it's specifically when general chrome who is the worst character and i love every time he's on screen he speaks <laughs> like a like a pro like a proselytizer, but also he's also like a dumb kid who just read his first philosophy 101 book and thinks he's basically got the best way to live figured out. Mm. Like his introduction is him having this like philosophical argument with uh, an EC guy he's ostensibly interrogating, who calls him out on his shit immediately, and Chrome like he, he like uh, plays it up like he's uh, like beyond this, but then also just kicks him off a cliff. Uh, but yeah, Chrome speaks just like, I've seen the true way, and I will lead my people into into freedom from hypocrisy and fascism. Uh, and in this civil war, you end up uh, killing the uh, mother. Yeah, uh, Royal's basically taking you y'all to her, thinking like, oh, we'll we'll just talk to mom. She'll get this <laughs> sorted out. You won't even, you probably won't even get penanced or anything. It's fine. And she immediately, like, is in public on a parade, very clearly just trying to keep her temper under control as, uh, this guy, who, Royal, who was just imprisoned by the one concerned moments ago, and then kind of loses her shit in boss battle. Woo. Yeah, and then you, you, in an attempt to fix things with Royal, take the rocket 
to the moon to talk to the Starworm, because Royal really believes that he is their almighty god yep. and can be convinced to spare people. It goes poorly. Yeah, yeah, it really does. Like the Starworm doesn't like, like react or or like it sh- like comes up really close, and Royal's just like beseeching him, please, uh, in your infinite wisdom, spare us, like help us, whatever, and no response. And then Royal starts getting pissy and just like, no, you will answer me, damn it! And actually like attacks the Starworm, who immediately fires a mind control device at him, and uh, uh, Royal kind of uh, then goes into full despair mode as the moon base uh, lose, starts losing air pressure as the Starworm bashes its skull against the uh, the glass. And you then have to escape. <laughs> uh, of note, Royal was the only one whose biological signature could open the doors, and one of the door panels is a bit too far from the door to bring him with you. Yes. And so you leave him on a space station with no oxygen. But yeah. he's a magical every person, so, you know, he's fine. I don't know. Yeah, he's fine. He was only just, like, as you're carrying him through the base, only saying, like, oh, leave me, I don't deserve to die, I was wrong, oh, I'm the worst person. But that could just be the mind control talking. Yeah, it certainly does seem to be some sort of, like, self-doubt machine, because it also gets used on you in the final fight. Yep. And that's essentially what it does. Uh, you also see it earlier um, uh, in the uh, tower where the one concern basically has been raising a bunch of people to be the most docile lambs of all time. They fully believe that the rest of the planet is uninhabitable and they and the one concern like elite are going to be the only ones on this new uh, moon uh, colony. Uh, you do see it used against one of them as... Uh, basically punishment for escaping and in order to like do this weird little suicide show and force the the poor pupil to uh uh off himself in front of his peers yeah and also the the uh cartographer mentioned earlier he has a gun that does it in his uh in his uh ship and it's implied that he's been using it uh on his two helpers to like help him map the world which because it's constantly changing due to the planet spines and one concern and whatnot, has been a... Uh... A fool's errand. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess wrapping up this synopsis, uh, mm-hmm. like, you land back from the moon, the Starworm also lands, question mark? Enters the planet? It, it like, yeah burrows deep into the planet's core. Um, for some reason, there's this huge crater. Uh, Mina, depending on your friendship, uh, might join you in the final fight. Oh, interesting. I guess I wasn't a good enough friend to Mina. That's a thing I we should bring up in a second, but basically, when you confront the Starworm... Uh, actually, yeah, do you want to take over the, the big reveal here? <laughs> yeah, although I, I already complained about it to you offline. Um, so you fight the Starworm, it hits you with a journey to the center of the mind beam, which is represented by, like, I don't know, black and red sort of demonic forms of the people you know uh, yes. attacking you while you attempt to uh, raise sunflowers, which is your brother's nickname for you. Yes, um, depend- like so the character of Royal, of your brother Elro, and Mina... Depending on your friendship with them, if it's at the max level, you do not do their part of the mind palace. Hmm. Okay, well, apparently I'm just a dick, because... Yeah, no, I did all four, too. It's very hard. <laughs> I got all of them. Um, yeah. yeah, and then there's a scene in with a like fake version of your dad, yep. where your dad is trying to convince you to just stay. I did not actually reload and try to see what happens if you just stay i think it's it's again just like minor like dialogue and like uh context changes but i don't think anything significant changes what you do there okay when you leave you get back to fighting the star worm um the second form of the star worm is it opens up and there's a cockpit and a giant bird mechanic 
comes out. Yeah, this is this is a cockpit. Like, there's even fuzzy dice on the uh, <laughs> on the rear view mirror. Um, yeah, it's a it's just a giant bird, unexplained, does not speak English. It just pops up a uh, an indicator for like amount of ivory in the planet. It's low. It points to it, squawks at you really angrily, and then you fight. Yep. Yep, their whole religion was uh, just a dude, and it's implied that, at the very least, the um, people in charge of the One Concern uh, are in cahoots with this guy, but this guy is the one who can, like, control the eyes, which control the planet. Uh, clearly, he gave them or has helped them with, like, that, that mind control ray, because, you know, that technology is probably based on what that Star Worm can do. But, like, it's all implication, I don't know that they are in cahoots with him. I think they are um, under his thumb and desperately trying not to be noticed, essentially. Yeah. Too much. Yeah, I guess cahoots is, like, yeah, too much on even ground. I think it's, like, yeah, like, the religion is, like, they they don't so much worship this guy as, oh, uh, please don't let the bird man hurt us. Yeah, so, like, the the implication I got of the, um, I forget what they, things to, that take control of other machines is actually called. I think um, they're just called the eyes. Yeah, uh, but, like, the eyes that are uh, locked in the ivory frame. Yeah, there's, like, yeah, like, is there's that a... by, like, restricting them, they have control over it rather than him? Question mark. Uh... Maybe I think it's I think it's just um like they've developed their own like system of control over like the certain like I think I think they're actually called con rollers like they're yeah. like these little like spherical or there's these things that like roll along along the ground with a bunch of spikes and like they go across the plant spines and there's a bunch of boss fights with things like them um so like and then the very big one that Royal unleashes that sends a signal to him. Like, they had deliberately buried to hide it yeah. from him, I think, that they were doing this. I don't know. That's the implication that I got. Yeah, the thing is, like, a lot of it ends up either not mattering or is, like, intention- this space intentionally left blank. Because, th- like, throughout the course of this, the one concern is thoroughly dismantled. Their whole escape plot, everything, through, like, both your actions inadvertently, Royal's actions inadvertently, and the, like, very willful, like, uh, coup attempt by Chrome. Uh, who dies, by the way? I'm not sure if we actually mentioned that his coup attempt, uh, was successful. He, uh, kills the previous, uh, patriarch of the One Concern, and then thinks himself invincible, uh, because, uh, the thing that, uh, killed agents before, uh, un- didn't work on him, but that's because he only got half a dose. Then Elro gives the other half nonchalantly <laughs> dead. So, yeah. There's, like, just a lot of human misery in this game. In a yeah. game that is also otherwise <laughs> kind of, like, a cheery aesthetic. <laughs> it's true. Like, the, like the, the, yeah. That's one of the things about this game, is that I feel like it, it's, it wants to be capital A about something. But... yeah. I'm not actually sure what it's saying. Like, I guess the the easiest thing to take out of it is a critique of, uh, like, government and religion, right? Well, I mean, like, it's called Iconoclast. Uh, yes. Which is a, a thing that has a meaning. People who are abjectly against or attack, uh, like, religious iconography or veneration. Yeah. Um, and so I guess the, the the biggest thing is that you are literally breaking down all of their symbols, right? Like, you kill the mother, and you fight the star worm, and it turns out to be a guy in a robot or something, or a cyborg? I, who knows? Oh, yeah. And, like, uh, Chrome also isn't so much religiously devout, because, like, he, he, like, attacks the mother. Like, I think he more or less, uh, see, like... He sees the hypocrisy in this, like, structure and is like, nah, I'm going to use my own cult of personality and essentially, like, kind of creates, yeah, a cult, uh, his own new religion based on him. Uh, and he says that, oh, no, I, I need to step down. We're all equal here. But, you know, you know what he's <laughs> all about. 
Um, Some people are more equal than others. Exactly. Uh, cause like he, he can't leave until his work is done until, uh, he can leave, uh, his people in peace. But like, I don't know, somehow it really bothered me that the end boss is just this weird bird man. Like, I mean, maybe that's part of the, the point of like, that's sort of the joke of like this big icon that they made into a god is really just a more advanced civilization and we are but, like, parasites on their backs kind of thing. Kind of. I don't know. Like, I felt like it wanted to have a bigger idea, but it... I, th- I think it's not really concerned with... Like, I think it's actually kind of critical of people who have, like, like the best ways of living. Like, like they're basically saying, like, oh, yeah, their worldview is, like, all there is and anything is else is... Uh, just like wrong-headed and must be must be destroyed. Yeah, and like the Issy aren't right either, right? Exactly. I, I guess the person who comes out the cleanest from this is Robin, the title character, and or not title character, but the main character. The main um, character. Yeah. But and it's not like she particularly has an ethos, but I guess her ethos, as far as we get, is. She just wants to help people, and it doesn't really matter to her why they need to be helped or or who they are. Like she's like her foil is her brother, who is const like who at one point believed in something enough to uh, jeopardize his family and uh, murder an agent and basically kick off the events of this whole game. Uh, after. After the penance, and he's left basically all alone and thinking his sister's dead, is basically at every turn tries to stymie her agency and say, no, we're going home. No, you're not doing this. No, I'm walking in this door, locking it, and you can't do the thing you came here to do. Yeah, in particular, when launching the rocket, um, yeah. he doesn't want to press the button, uh, Mina actually shoots him, which is surprisingly yep. non-lethal. Um, for He's a, been through worse. <laughs> a guy who is supposed to be a baseline human. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's somewhat implied that his co-conspirator Tegan shows it's... up and presses the button oh, for it him instead. Almost outright stated yeah. without actually outright stating it. Like, it's also very clear when, like, they're discussing their plan, when he's against it, and then Tegan says, no, I'll go, and then he immediately just says, okay, I'll do it. Obviously planning on being in a position to say no. But yeah. she knows him too well, and also that's probably how he survives, that she was right there. She's, at the very least, a chemist. Not sure how much medical training she has, but... Yeah, uh, the EC. Um, like, you, you would think they're, like, the... The opposite of the one concern, who's obviously been established as an antagonist, but it's revealed that, like, their ivory gathering operations, uh, have been doing far more damage to the planet than, uh, the one concern. Of course, we get this information from the one concern. Who knows how good it is? But also, their, uh, society is structured around that whole, uh, you must get married, you must birth babies, this is, this is how we celebrate you, and uh, there's one character who's a doctor, who apparently has been exiled because he has a blood disease, and even though he's less going around helping people, he doesn't get to live in their society. Yeah, that's great. That's a, that's a, that's a great society you've got there. Yeah, definitely. Uh, definitely not insular and uh, uh, self-righteous at all. Cool motive, still murder, though. <laughs> um. Yeah, so like, I don't know, that's that's the most I can get out of what this story stuff is supposed to mean. Yeah, like, I guess I don't really look at it as something that's trying to make a grand statement like that, or like, yeah, I'd, I would like a cohesive, like, broad thesis of it, but for the most part, it's just a collection of characters um, who have their own, like, very specific worldviews and, like, the conflicts that, like, arise from that. From Chrome to Agent Black, uh, like, 
to like the one concern. All of these people are ostensibly on the same side, at least at the beginning, but wildly different in their approach and where their stories lead. Yeah, um, like everyone has like pretty intense idiosyncrasies. Yep. Uh, like uh, Elro, it, when you finally get the flashbacks of him, uh, it's. Uh, I don't know, he's almost more, like, uh, bipolar in that, like, in the flashbacks, he was extremely, like, action-oriented. He was like, something needs to be done. Yeah, and, and this is, like, right after his dad died, and he's just like, those people, he got, he got radicalized, and like, I need to do something. So I discovered a way to kill the immortal agents. Yeah. And then, like, after his family dies, which I guess he didn't think very much about the consequences i don't know it was very irresponsible i'll tell you that <laughs> um he is just like on the depressive swing and is like morose and really just wants to like he is sit and the do nothing. most beaten down but like makes all the wrong decisions as a result of that although there is is one interesting part uh when you go to i think it's one concern east is where it is where he sneaks out of containment and seemingly is trying to put himself in a transcendence machine. Yeah. That that was an interesting moment that, like, didn't get dwelled on very much. There are a couple of things like that. Like, there are a couple of things that just, like, interesting moments, interesting things you look into uh, on characters that just are, are not the main plot, and so we're it's just, like, a little bit of extra depth, but... Yeah, that moment. What do you think he's trying to do, like with uh, whatever immortality he was going to attempt to get? Uh, I mean, I assume that after all of the stuff, he w was feeling pretty powerless, and so he wanted the like results of transcendence to, um, I guess, continue to exact revenge. I don't know. Yeah, it's really at not this point, clear. He, at this point, he's also, I think, lost his arm. Like, it, Black ripped it off in an earlier ex encounter. Oh, yeah. Uh, this is pr before getting shot. Like, at the very end of this game, he is... Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, he's the butt monkey. Everything bad happens to him. Yeah. But yeah, you just... Like, yeah, it's just, like, not mentioned. Like, oh, we found him. Let's, let's go. Um... Mina, as our EC, like, best friend, she's with us the most amount of the time and also has some playable sections. Hmm. They're not particularly, like, deep. She just has a shotgun. But, uh, they're, they're, they're nice changes of pace, but. Yeah. I, so I kind of feel like there should have been more with her and her mom that I that, missed. That gets dropped. Yeah. Yeah, that kind of just got dropped where it's just like, yeah, her mom, just like has some serious abandonment issues yep uh relating to uh whoever her father was i assume yes and mina has also just kind of been like yeah i don't know how to deal with things here probably because everyone's pressuring her to have a baby and she might be a lesbian she is almost explicitly in a relationship with samba uh in fact in the ending credits you see them basically uh, hand, hand in hand in front of the uh, statue of their ancestors, which Mina had prior very enthusiastically said, oh yeah, this is where couples go to like, essentially get married. Oh yeah, I definitely did not remember that context for that scene. Yeah, uh, it, like that's like part of her whole, like the thing that's like not really dwelled upon or like done in detail, but like is part of Mina's character is that she really is like, truthfully proud of her heritage and like loves her like you know her home but also gets wicked imposter syndrome because she doesn't fit the uh the mold of uh you you will find out yourself a husband and crank out them babies yeah and so she doesn't like hanging around this place that makes her feel like an outsider and so that means she's gone for a long time and she doesn't know how to deal with her mom just like saying like i, I need i need you here all the time and uh, her girlfriend, who would also like to see her more than once every few missions. I mean, to be entirely honest, her mom also did not come off very nice in general. No, there's a lot of human misery and people like behaving badly due to like all sorts of circumstances. But yeah, that's a thing that I feel like would have been 
uh, expounded upon if this game was the same, like, like was a broader scope of things. Yeah. Because this guess... game had, was in development hell. Yeah, 10 years, I think he said. Yep. It's a long time. And, like, he'd been working on, other like, various uh, projects as, like, art and animation for, like, I think even, like, the Shantae games here yeah. and there. But for his personal projects, it was like, okay, Noi 2 Love, Noi 2 Love 2, this very small uh, game called Legend of Princess. Oh, yeah, I played and that earlier today. It was pretty good. It's pretty good. It's like a short, like, three-boss boss rush thing, starring definitely not uh, Link. Oh, Legend yes. of Zelda. Definitely not Link. Definitely not Link. Uh, and then, yeah, like, there's a demo for this game, like, five years before it was released, which was essentially the first, like, uh, opening section that we saw, almost unchanged. So, yeah, like, this definitely went through development hell, and I wonder how much of the stuff in this game is just, like, things that were scaled back, but what he wanted to keep in. Hmm. Yeah, I guess uh, before we move back in a more gameplay-ish direction, uh, talk about this relationship stuff, because I sure. didn't... I mean, there are definitely questions that people ask you um, that didn't seem to really affect anything. What is the extent of the relationship values thing? So, for, at the very least, Elro and Royal, as far as I can tell, it just changes whether or not... Like, it changes, like, dialogue things that happen... Uh, I'm pretty sure, like, like scenes will just have uh, them talking to you dif- like differently, depending on how close you are. But also, in the final encounter, you have four, like, mind palace fights, one of which is Agent Black. Can't do anything about that, but it's also the one where it's just, like, this almost corpse crawling across the ground, and you just kind of put it out of your, you, th- its misery. Very easy. But for uh, Mina, uh, again, same thing of uh, dialogue differences. But also, if you have it at the max, you don't do her Mind Palace fight, and then she'll actually f- help you with her shotgun in uh, the Starworm fight proper. Okay, and that's the extent of it? There's just dialogue changes otherwise? I, I think so. Like, in my first playthrough, I definitely just absolutely donked it, and she did not care for me much at all by the end. So after you return from space, and she's, like, outside your house, she ba- I'm pretty sure she basically said, like, okay... I think I've repaid my debt to you now. It's not like we're really friends. I'm going to go. Huh. And in this more recent one, which I didn't get all the way max up, but she's just like, she gave me a hug and just like, I need to be with Sam right now. But uh, listen, you can do whatever you want. Uh, don't let anyone tell you otherwise. And it was more like of a pep talk kind of thing. Yeah, I must have been in the middle because I got the hug, but not participation in the final boss. Yeah, I think that's where I was too. But I'm not sure the full extent, and also I think there's also a friendship thing with like Polro, your your uh, father, where you get occasionally like flashbacks with like him talking to you. But it's also probably just you having a conversation with yourself. Uh, but I don't think they affect much. Hmm. So again, it's another thing where I think it was going to be expanded upon. But what we got is you know a nice little like secret thing, but nothing too extensive. Yeah. Um, all right, I guess, uh, so when you suggested this, you brought up that you weren't clear on if it was a Metroidvania. Yes, like, I think it is, but I think its weakest elements are the things that are Metroidvania about it. Like, I don't think the exploration is inherently rewarding enough. Like, doing the extra bits of puzzles, cool. The thing you get from it, uh... Yeah, um... I yeah I don't know something about the the way that the secrets were set up really didn't rub me right I think mostly I'm not a big fan of um, like find the spot that looks like um, most of the rest of it but is actually a like a hidden passage mm. that I felt like happened a lot and like there is a tw- a tweak that helps you with that. Um, but it's also in one of these secret areas. It's one of the hardest to find. Like it's one that I didn't find in my first playthrough. Yeah, I found it entirely by using a guide to get 100% completion, which I was like unashamedly doing. I was just like, "Yep, I've got like 
in this area. I'm just going to look stuff up. Yeah, I do like that it uh, gives you map completion per area, so you know when you've got like a full clear of a sp- particular spot if you're not going with a guide. Yeah. But all of the things you find are either just materials for like the tweak up, like your tweaks, or very rarely schematics for tweaks. Yeah. And as has already been established, ex- aside from the really late ones, like there's one that you can get like a double jump from, uh, the one that reveals secrets. Uh, it's not rewarding, but th- like I think the core gameplay of it being like a platform puzzler is very good. I like the puzzles in the main dungeons. I like yeah. doing them. It was pretty uh, solid. Um, I think it would have worked better as a more linear focused less uh like it it didn't need to be uh the exploration part of it almost would have preferred like just bespoke uh individual dungeons rather than having to hop from one to the other at the end game to actually get everything yeah i i guess so um and actually a random complaint i thought of about the tweaks why was the tweak crafting separate from save points. I don't know. That seemed really strange to me. Like, I I assume that that is uh, just a fallout from some other uh, thing uh, that that there was planned for. Like, I'm not sure how extensive tweaks were going to be, and but there was really no reason other than the, like, in-fiction... Uh, justification for crafting the tweaks. Oh yeah, you do it at crafting table. These statues, oh, they're just like religious uh, iconography. You, that's where you save. But it's also where you equip tweaks, so it's weird. Yeah, so like, to me, and this is just like another game design thing about uh, do the tweaks fit in the, the game that is here, uh, right? Is that um, there is the potential to be like, okay, I'm sucking at fighting this boss, I need to change my tweak loadout, right? But your tweak loadout, uh, unless you actually built some of the tweaks ahead of time, uh, you're going to be stuck with. Yes. Right. Yeah, you can't go. You can't immediately go back. You'd have to remember where a crafting table was and also have the materials on hand. So you, yeah. it doesn't behoove you to stock that. You you want to build all the tweaks you can because you're not going to know when you're going to be able to craft them again and the crafting tables are actually pretty sparse yeah like there's like like one per zone there's usually one near like the main uh save of any given hub yeah but it's also always separate and like a screen away so if you're hopping in your uh the fast travel thing which unlocks super late uh to go to uh, a crafting table it's just far enough away to be kind of annoying. Yeah, and uh, I guess I was kind of dumb and managed to miss miss things again with the not finding the secrets places. Um, the like last fast travel point in One Concern West, I didn't find that until I was doing the hundred percent completion follow. You know what? Me neither. Don't don't feel bad. And it's just like, well, that would have been great to know i guess i don't know like i understand why they were hit fairly hidden in the areas before you know about it but uh yeah a lot of them were actually just like uh explicitly impassable until you uh essentially unlock fast travel yeah um so i guess uh, my feelings about the gameplay of this game are i don't know pretty medium like there was nothing really wrong with it Okay, um, like you, do, like it, nothing offended you, but I mean, there was like a couple things that were annoying to me, but um, like I also kind of just feel dumb for not realizing some of the stuff, um, particularly involving the bombs and the um, Isilgar. Uh, oh yeah, that's is, is that where you first start doing that those kinds of puzzles with the grenade launcher? Yes. So, I I don't know, I got... I managed not to figure out a bunch of the ways that you could shoot bombs well, 
Oh no. Um, it's kind of funny. Uh, so you go through Isilgar and you get three keys. Um, and I forget what that was actually supposed to do. I guess they were. That was more of a plot coupon than. Literally yeah, it was essentially three keys. okay. Yeah, you need three keys to get through this door, to get to the power generator, to restart it, to get like to do the emergency thing because you see where I was under attack. Oh no! Yeah, um, there is a space where there's a, a bombable blocks that you need to hit upward. Yes, and I managed to get myself stuck there in the dumbest way possible. <laughs> Like, because actually, like, glitch softlock stuck? No, just in a not realizing how to make things work. Oh, okay. Um, because every th- time I would try to shoot the charged bomb at it, I would also jump. Oh. And yeah, no. the charged bomb does not actually bomb unless you shoot it from, like, a cr- like a half the screen away from what it's actually going to hit. Yeah, when you charge the grenade launcher, it's actually a, a, a missile launcher, which fires a rocket first, and then it goes a set distance, and then it kind of activates, and then, uh, like, shoots forward. And it's only after that activation that it actually interacts with things. It's yeah. basically just a, uh, there's a lot of, like, spacing puzzles around that to make sure, you're, okay, you need to be the set distance for using it, but it's the only thing that works. Yeah. Um... So this was, I think, the first time that you really have to use it for that. Yeah. And I was just, like, utterly lost. I had to look up a walkthrough and oh, was no. like, oh, well, now I feel dumb. Because every time I was doing it, I was trying to jump into it. Just get, get me closer. I want to hit it with my missile. It made sense in my head. Yeah, and I guess it, it like, didn't really communicate the, the reason why I was failing. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm trying to think, because, like, I know I didn't have that problem, um, but, like, yeah, it's, like, at first it's kind of weird, like, okay, that didn't work for the missile, it just kind of clinks off, and you're not sure why. No no explosion, just a clink. But. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know, and, like, looking back, I think I had actually screwed that up already once, where I was trying to destroy one of the walls that I can only describe as looking like black and red grenades. Okay. Um, Which you destroy with the bomb, right? Yes. Um, And I had charged it up, and it did nothing. I was like, oh, I guess that's not actually something that is cleared by the bomb, and, like, went and did something else. And I was like, nope, I'm stuck here. Maybe try the bomb on that again? Somehow it worked this time. Great. Yeah, yeah. the way this game, like, uh, basically tutorializes you is usually there's just a signpost with these little uh, drawings of how the things work in like a stylized uh, fashion. And I guess that whatever thing was supposed to communicate that missiles require distance uh, did not do a good enough job for you. Yeah. I don't know, because like, you don't have so many tools that like, you you can kind of just assume that, okay, something works, but... Yeah, I can, I can, I can, don't feel too bad. Yeah. Um, I don't know, there, there's also just, like, some really minor things. So there's the, the, um, I don't know what to call it, the power lines, I guess? Oh, yeah. Between you... sockets? I, jeez, I don't have a great terminology for these things. <laughs> uh, bolts, I guess. The power lines yeah. between the nuts. bolts. You, listen, like this is nuts. a game about cranking your nuts, okay? Yeah. Um, constantly uh where um if you held a direction well hitting it with the wrench you would instead do the like nut alley oop instead of uh, going across the power line oh yeah and the number of times that i've managed to hurt myself by or just like miss doing something yeah with that was a little frustrating i think there was a chest at one point where you had to like drop down to a power like drop down and go around the thing you were on to get to a power line and of course i was holding left yeah and i think that's also in an area where you're constantly like losing air so yeah uh, so you had a time limit as well yeah no just uh it's that's i guess that's the challenge i don't know that yeah yeah. i also did not care very much for the 
like the amount of breath holding mechanics that happened in this game. Ah, just equip your uh, breathless tweaks. Gives you so much air. Oh yeah, but I didn't make them. So <laughs> oh, I I immediately made three as soon as I could. <laughs> no, I was holding out for something better because like pff, this is lame. Um, I was just then... like, oh, there's a lot of swimming here. I'd like that to go faster, please. And so I just made three, and then uh... that was particularly annoying to me for the uh, optional boss Fitzroy, right? Like that. So I feel like the optional bosses should have been the place where the tweak systems shined, and like. You had you would have had some interesting builds to use them on because these are the end of the game. You've got all the tweaks. Yep. This one locks you into you have to use at least two breathless just to get there. Just to get there, and it's one of the harder uh, bosses in the game, if not the hardest. Yeah. Also, like having to then do the. It's not a long swim back every time you die. But it's oh, it's long enough. I it's yeah, it's long enough that it was making me salty. Listen, in case it's not clear, I really do a lo- like this game. I uh, <laughs> unlike some people in this call, uh, <laughs> but I cannot defend that that just nothing uh, swim back every time you die to one of the hardest bosses in the game. They should have just put a checkpoint or something outside that boss room because ugh. Yeah, because I was trying to do it on like a high, like a higher difficulty because I'd already played this game through. Yeah, um, I am. I eventually just knocked it down because I was just not having a good time. Yeah, <laughs> trying it over and over again. Yeah, I can see that. Um, yeah, it, I mean these are pretty nitpicky, right? Exactly. Like th- these are the things where if if it's not already not like doing something for you to like nudge the needle in the positive direction you're just kind of middling like yeah this is okay the nitpicks start to add up yeah and so like i feel like i started out the game with a pretty good view of it and then like the the nits just started piling as mm. i went mm. and actually actually i feel like isolgar had most of my complaints about it other than like uh, I don't know. I'm just apparently really bad at finding entrances to secrets in this game. <laughs> yeah, like again, like I can only speak for myself, but I found the puzzle design to be quite good. Uh, I thought it, it was usually pretty clear, but like the, it, it was a good mix of figuring out what to do and doing some like specific platforming. Uh, and there are occasions where uh, you can sort of like sequence. Like, very minorly sequence break certain puzzles if you know how to, like, charge up your uh, stun gun and fire it downward to get a boost. Like, there's a... Uh... <laughs> yeah, that's another one that I did not realize for most of the game. You don't need to do it ever, but, like, there in the very first town, there's a key that's just out of reach that if you do that, you can get it, or you can just wait till you get the swap gun and use its main ability to do it for free. Oh, you know, I think I assumed that you couldn't even get it if... You tried, but I thought I had tried. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you can. Um, but yeah, no, I really liked it. I think the dungeon that I found was the most like kind of aggravating was the tower. Oh Just yeah, with the, with the elevators going up and down, but like they don't match where you are. So if you're trying to get everything, it's a lot of backtracking in a game that I again, I really like this game as a puzzle platformer. I think the worst things about it are how it's a Metroidvania. Yeah, the tower definitely I was not having a great time with. Um, And, like, there were actually things I started to pick up on that, like, there are subtle cues that the game is trying to help you with. Like, there are fireflies or something that will appear on the path that you need to take if you are struggling. Um, I'm not sure how quickly they appear, or if they, they actually are just always on the path that you're supposed to take to sort of indicate to you that you are, like, this is the way. The big thing I got stuck on in the tower was that, um, so at one point there's one of the gates that is blocking an elevator um, shaft, right? Yep. And then you move that gate and the elevator can go up. Um, that's not where you're supposed to go. Well, I mean, maybe you also needed to go there. Um, but what that actually also did was allow you to jump on top of 
that gate, which is now in the next room, and go up from there. And I got stuck, like, I, like, I spent a good, like, half hour at least, um, just, like, exploring all of my ob other options in there because I did not perceive that as a place I could go up. Yeah, like, this is also an area with, like, a lot of, like, ducks that you crawl through, some of which you can, some of which you can't, uh... Yeah. And, and just so really, like, rooms off to the side, it's, uh... Yeah, the number of times that I crossed back and forth through those stupid lasers, which aren't <laughs> hard, right? It's no, just, like... Not at all, but... Probably did it at least 20 times, right? It's like, ugh! I've done this before, and it's, like... Yeah, if you're trying to get everything, you're going through that even more times, uh... And you even have to, like, come back with, a uh, like weaponry you get later to actually fully complete it, I believe. Yeah. Like, I, I didn't... I don't mind that for when it's getting to secrets. Mm -hmm. It bothers me when, like, I was having trouble finding the route that would get me toward the plot again. The plot is, I will say, its main draw, and by plot I mean character interactions. I feel like <laughs> every, t every time someone is speaking on screen, I'm like, yes, yes, give it to me. <laughs> I mean, it is a lot of fun. Agent Black is a large ham. Yeah. And, and, she, and is ostensibly the main antagonist, honestly. Yeah. Or at the very least, like, the one you interact with and are against the most, but, like, she doesn't even really care about you. She cares about uh, your brother and also the last, uh, like, her duty, essentially. Yeah, I almost feel like... I, I don't know if there's actually that much direct comparison to have, because I feel like she's almost the foil for Robin. Yeah. But I'm not sure that actually makes sense in if you actually look at comparing whatever minor character notes we have for Robin versus her. Like, Robin does have a character despite being, a, like, largely a uh, silent protagonist. Um... Like, it's kind of imply that, oh yeah, ever since her father died, she doesn't speak much anymore, but, like, she makes decisions, has, like, motivations, uh, but, like, it's usually communicated silently. Yeah. Or, like, in, like, a lot of, like, bespoke animations. This game has a lot of just, like, individually crafted uh, animations for scenes, which is nice to see in a 2D uh, game. Yeah. Or in emoji. Or an or an emoji, <laughs> lot lot of emoji, lot of uh, speech bubble with a heart in it. But yeah, the, that's like kind of the main draw for me was uh, even though like it's just like full of just them having all of them having the worst day of their lives, <laughs> uh, it, each individually in their own different ways. But just seeing that their different like personalities interact, especially Chrome and Black, uh, Royal and anybody. Uh, <laughs> Mina and Elro, it's great. They have like a lot of like conversations about what they believe and why they believe it, and also it has a really dark sense of humor. It's uh, I don't know. It it was refreshing, I guess, at it like because I definitely didn't expect that uh, from the opening, which is like just the cheery, brightest, poppy music. Let's go, uh, stunning some animals, whatever. Oh, weird thing in the ground. What's that? And then, oh yeah, your family's basically dead. <laughs> yeah. Your family's dead because the government has been using an underground train to pretend to wrath of God people. Yeah. Um, actually, that, that reminds me, I mentioned earlier that I got frustrated by not figuring out some of the things and being like, why would that be what you needed to do? Okay. Um, the underground train with the buzzsaw, um, for oh, some reason, I it love took that me fight. forever to figure out that you could turn the saw with your your wrench spin. Oh, okay, yeah. And, like, that is essential to the fight. And I was like, how am I supposed to line up this weak point? And, like, it never gives me an opportunity to shoot it, but it's clearly the weak point I need to shoot. Turns out I was missing a step. It was. It's basically like a giant version of, like, these things where when you spin your wrench, it, like, they they it's like a big gear and it spins around and does a thing. Um, yeah. I don't know. I... I grokked it immediately, uh, but listen, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna harangue you. I don't know. I am also dumb. Uh, like also with the uh, 
uh, what, e what even was with the like little vignette section with the guy in the powered armor? Oh, um, who imprisons the child. Oh, that's uh, one of the pupils from the tower, right? He escaped. He th like, and they're all led to believe that the uh, planet outside is utterly inhabitable, uninhabitable. Yeah. And so he he basically jacks some of their power armor and leaves. And... Wait, is that the pupil they punish later? Yes. I definitely did not realize oh, that. Oh, no. Yeah, like, you also, uh, when you're exploring the tower, there's these little notes talking about, yeah, there's an incident here, the pupil will be punished, the uh, rest in his uh, cell block will be uh, moved to other places. One of the rooms is completely abandoned, which you can get to, which was the room that they were that they used all used to live in. And yeah, there's a whole scene with uh, Mr. Chatter and uh, Wink, Winky or whatever, mind controlling him to uh, like death uh, to suicide himself. Yeah, that, that's him. What was with those two? Characters? I assume they would have been expanded upon, but yeah, they're basically there to keep the uh, pupils in in check with these little uh, performances of theirs. Yeah, like, uh, there's a lot of, like, bit part characters that show up and just kind of disappear. Yeah. Like, I guess the other thing is the, uh, I don't remember what the level below the agents was called, but the, like, the purple ivory, the purple and black ivory infused people that you oh. fight as individual bosses with uh, each of Robin, Mina, and Elro. Yeah, they're basically introduced, yeah, like, very quickly, uh, not a whole lot there. In fact, like, I think only, like, one of them really talks at all, which is Lawrence, who, who's the only one who actually dies, uh, cause Elro, uh, is beyond giving a shit. Uh, but they, uh, they're, they're just there to be boss battles, essentially, and one of them is Ash's daughter, who he mentions briefly in your interaction with him. Yeah. I, that was not entirely clear to me, but like I, I, he does mention something about trying to influence the transcender results. Yeah, and he mentions how his daughter went through it as well, um, and he appears in the ending screen with uh, at least, uh, yeah, with I think the both of them, honestly. Man, was I just not paying attention to the credits? Apparently, like, the, and there's a lot more like we could go into, like the bureaucrats in charge of the different areas um but like a, a lot of this game i think is really just the character interactions i think the dialogue writing while sometimes slightly weird and uh english as a second languagey uh is really well put together and fun to read i didn't actually find it that bad for english as a second language it i guess it struck me as a very intentional tone there are a couple of turns of phrase that were just awkward that I can't think of a ex specific example right now, hmm. but it it like had a tone that was like it didn't feel out of place when that when it happened. It was just like oh yeah, that's weird. I don't know. There was nothing that was like this guy are sick to me. No, no, no. I I don't mean like actual like <laughs> grammatical problems. It's just like they they like just did an idiom that just made like that I've never heard before. I, that's just a one concern idiom. I don't know. Clear, clearly, maybe <laughs> I'm at fault here, and also, you know, yeah, I, it's fine. Who knows? Whomst could say. <laughs> but yeah, um, where would you rank this game in the games we've played? Um, oh god, that requires me to remember all of the games we've played. I mean, we haven't actually played that many games yet. Exactly, but it'd be it'd be fun to like keep a very informal like Chart. ranking as we go. Okay. Um, uh, so, obviously Xanadu <laughs> has to go at the bottom. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it would make sense to put it anywhere else. I did actually mark the games we've played on my lists. Cool. So, games we've played for the podcast. Yes. So, Xanadu, yep. Symphony of the Night, mm -hmm. uh, Hollow Knight, uh, Iconoclasts. Is that it? I feel like... I guess we haven't been done doing this this long. <laughs> no, it's ep like this is episode three, uh, not counting the uh, the initial like general Metroidvania talk. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and That's we played fair. two in the first in the first episode. Uh, yeah, controversially giving like two of the biggest games <laughs> half an episode each. Hmm, maybe want to revisit that at some point, but I don't know. Um. <laughs> 
We'll we'll leave the door open, but yeah. Um. All right. So I mean, uh, coming up with a ranking for me, like Hollow Knight is one of my favorite games. So I think it gets the top. Like you can argue about should you prefer, um, like, uh, pioneers versus really I polished th- versions. I think we should establish here that I think like what we're going for is how you play it now in what year the year current year uh of our like, starworm of our starworm I, I don't know i mean it like i feel like any time you're talking about rankings it's a very personal thing of what goes into rankings right yeah so it's fine yeah like if people disagree i th- so, I, I i'm explicitly wanting like a, a not like an informal kind of thing yeah so like i'd go hollow knight uh, Castlevania Symphony of the Night, uh, and then Iconoclasts, and then a big gulf <laughs> before Xanadu. In fact, like this is a f- this is a list of five, and four it, number four is left intentionally blank. Yes, <laughs> sure. <laughs> like I would do the same, except swap Symphony and Iconoclast. Honestly, yeah, you think this is better? Or, like, you like Iconoclasts more than you like Symphony? Uh, yeah. Huh. Okay. I, act- I actually do, but I think it's mostly, like, it's... If I'm ranking, like, things based on adherence to Metroidvania conventions and how well they do that, different list. Yeah. But in terms of games I would like to play again, uh, yeah. That- that's kind of where I'm at. But I think it's it's... Honestly, it's what the uh, it does uh, with characters uh, that keeps me more invested than the more mechanical uh, nuance of uh, Symphony. That's fair. There are not a lot of plot in Symphony. And... and there's not a lot of puzzles in Symphony, which is also something I appreciate. Yeah. Like, it's um. usually just have the thing you need, and then that it's a, it's a glorified key. Yeah, we can, we can maintain lists as we go. And... Sure. Sure insert into it um so i guess we're probably winding down uh, probably um, so uh the game i was thinking of playing next is guacamole oh um another indie darling yeah i mean i'm kind of looking at this and i i guess i t- have a tendency to to like to skip around a little bit in timeline um so okay. guacamole is from 2013 um i'm specifically going to say tur- Super Turbo Championship Edition, um, <laughs> but without knowing very much about them other than apparently... So there's Gold Edition and Super Turbo Championship Edition. Apparently okay. Super Turbo is a rebalanced uh, version? Question mark? <laughs> I assume in terms of combat? Because I feel like, yeah... I- from what I know about the game, never played it, but I feel like combat is plays a major role in it, so that would yeah. make sense, not like a actual like restructuring of level design. So, like, the interesting thing to me, and I guess if we really want, we can try playing through it twice, um, uh, is that they, like, they rebalanced things, but they actually released it as a second game edition rather than just updating over top of the old one. Huh. All right, so I actually have both of them in my games list in Steam. Okay. Oh, so like it it's not like you purchased it twice, it's just they're two separate executables? Uh I think I, I can't remember. I think they only sell as a bundle, but I'm maybe I did purchase them twice. <laughs> okay. I, I hope not. That sounds dumb. But yeah, I I do think I like the mouthfeel of Super Hyper T- Turbo Edition or whatever. Super Turbo Championship Edition. Super Turbo Championship Edition. Dash. It's a bit of a mouthful of a mouthfeel. <laughs> the World <laughs> Warriors uh, Rev Two. Yeah, it, they're definitely making some reference to Street Fighter. Yeah. So I'm down to play it. Let's go. All right. Uh, All right. I've forgotten how we wrap up. We uh that that's actually how we wrap up is you forget how to wrap up. <laughs> <laughs> this has become my thing is forgetting how to wrap up. Absolutely. Uh I guess we sign off. Um, yeah, th- uh thanks for joining us. 
Yeah, this has been an episode of the Inverted Castle. Uh, we're off to go uh, topple some world religions. Uh, let's smash some iconography. What do you say? Yeah, sounds great. <laughs>